Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our webinar. We have a special webinar today on discovery risk insight in a metadata-driven world. Uh, I have joining me today people from our partner, Netrix. First, a couple of housekeeping items. Uh, this will be recorded, and we'll have it on our website. We have all of our webinars on our website, so if you're interested in more information about um, information management and classification, please come to our website and have a look at those. Uh, today, we will uh, be joined by Ilya Sotnikov and Jeff Milnick. My name is Robert Pedock. I'm the Vice President of Channel and Business Development here at Concept Searching. I've been in the information management space for quite a long time, over 15 years, and worked in uh, information retrieval for a long time also. I'm kind of a SharePoint guy, SharePoint geek, and, and help out with the SharePoint community here in Vancouver, where I'm located. Ilya, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, thank you, Robert. Um, so, yep, my name is Ilya Sotnikov, and I'm uh, here at Netflix running the product management organization for the company, uh, working with the customers, with the partners on defining the product uh, roadmap and strategy. Uh, I have been uh, in the industry for about 17, uh, 17 years now, uh, working in various uh, capacities in companies like Quest Software um, and uh, Dell Software uh, prior to Netflix, um, so primarily dealing with various uh, Windows management and, by the way, SharePoint management solutions. Um, so. Uh, uh, with that, I think uh, I want to introduce uh, Jeff Melnick, uh, who is head of the pre-sales uh, engineers organization here at Netflix. Jeff? Hey, thanks a lot, Ilya. So, uh, yeah, I've been here uh, for uh, about seven and a half years. Um, do a lot of deployments, uh, do a lot of configurations, a lot of demonstrations with clients. Uh, before uh, I came to Netflix, I used to do... Uh, I used to work really as a systems engineer, uh, primarily in things like Active Directory Exchange, uh, group policy, those types of things. He used to do a lot of integrations, migrations of customers. So uh, that's a little bit of my background. Um, and I'll turn it back over to Robert. Thanks, Jeff. It's a very, uh, great pleasure to have you guys on today. So let's just go over our agenda and uh, talk a little bit about what we're going to talk about. So first, we'll talk about what, what our com who our companies are, what we do, and why we've partnered. Um, then I'll talk a little bit about the importance of metadata. I think that's why we're all here to, to, to see what metadata is and why we're using it, and especially in a risk and compliance space. And then we'll talk about our, that risk and the solution that we provide together as, as partners. Uh, we've got some demos lined up so you can actually see the products in action, and uh, then what we can do after that. Great. So first, I'll talk about Concept Searching. Concept Searching uh, was founded in 2002. We started as a search vendor with some very unique IP that ha that's based on a statistical model. Um, it's something that works extremely well, and we have sold quite uh, aggressively and um, successfully across the market. Um, We've been in the KM World's top 100 company that matter in knowledge management for a long time, and we've, we've worked a lot in the information management space. It's kind of our sweet spot where we're, we're passionate about. Uh, but recently, we, we've seen that there has, actually for, for several years, that there is a great need for compliance and data classification in a security context. And um, we met with Netrix and have agreed to make a partnership where Netrix uses our technology to help people address those needs in the security space. We, of course, still selling in our information management space and helping customers in those space, but it's a, it's a great new space that we're helping out um, uh, Netrix in. We are, uh, have also recently been uh, analyzed by one of our, um, one of the analyst companies out there and, um, and, uh, got a very good ranking as a leader in this space in, in uh, data file analysis. So that's, uh, that's a good thing to do. I'll pass it over to Ilya now to talk a little bit about uh, Netrix. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Um, so um, Netrix um, has been on the market for, uh, for quite a while, founded in 2006. Uh, we have been primarily dealing with uh, with the solutions for IT operations, IT management teams, um, and uh, over years we have accumulated 
global customer base over 9,000 uh, companies relying on our solutions and we had uh, a number of uh, recognitions and awards uh, and we are proud to be uh, one of the fastest growing company recognized both by Deloitte and uh, Inc 5000 uh, lists and um, talking about what we do uh, our main focus is on a solution on the platform that is called Netflix Auditor. And what it is, it's really a visibility platform that gives you uh, information about uh, changes and configurations in your environment, user access, who is doing what, uh, what was changed, when and where, who has access where, that kind of stuff across multiple systems, across your uh, servers, data center, Active Directory, file shares, uh, systems like SharePoint, and then into the cloud with Office 365. Um, and all of that we do for, uh, for improving uh, your security. Um, so if you think about uh, detecting abnormal activities, uh, identifying risky configurations, identifying threats. Uh, we also uh, help uh, our customers with uh, compliance audits, uh, implementing those security controls, compliance controls, automating uh, reports around that, uh, saves them a lot of time. And then finally, uh, uh, we are also helping to in increase the team productivity for, for the operations, whether uh, purely IT or IT security, whether we are talking about troubleshooting situations or investigations, being able to quickly find out uh, what happened, who changed what, uh, you know, if, if emissions or configurations changed, uh, that can go a long way uh, saving the day for these teams. Um, and with that, uh, Robert, back to you. Thank you, Ilya. Um, so, with that great visibility platform that Netrix has, how can concept searching help them? Well, let's talk a little bit about our technology first to, to, and the, the background behind the technology to see where we bridge a gap that, um, that customers may have in order to find uh, content and, and get some visibility of the security threats with those content. So um, our key differentiator for what we do at Concept Searching is our statistical analysis and specifically our concept of finding concepts, our compound term processing technology. What this allows you to do is go out and find the content that is in your organizations, that is in all of the, the information that you have stored, structured and unstructured information that you might have stored in your organization. And that's, that's growing at a massive rate. So we all have a lot of it. Um, and we don't know what it is. It's, it's distributed all across the organization and it is a mess. So what we have is a search-based technology that can go out and crawl that content and figure out what it's about. Now, there are technologies that will allow you to, to see into some content, maybe do some index of it, but most of them are quite simple and they just look for single keywords. We can actually look for phrases and this is a really common thing in language that there are terms or ideas that are represented by phrases. A typical example is triple heart bypass. This is a surgical operation. But each of these words on its own has its own specific meaning. Together, they have a unique meaning. And most uh, technologies can't understand that. They're only looking for that single word. A typical example that I always use is policy. If I'm gonna go out and try to look for policies and I just use the word policy, I'm gonna get back a lot of uh, false positives. I'm gonna get back a lot of content that is not policies, just because the word policy appears in there. So we can actually go out and say, here, triple heart bypass, it's a medical term, it's a surgical operation, it may have meaning to your organization. Let's do something with it, let's organize it. What this gives you is a single platform to be able to manage all sorts of information by being able to manage metadata. So we can go out and do optimization on content. We can help you do intelligent migration. We can uh, improve search. We can facilitate records management. And in a security space that we're talking about here, we can go out and find that sensitive data. Sensitive data that may not be obvious if you use some of the traditional tools out there. So what's the cost of, of having this poor metadata? Well, as I mentioned, search. P 
people can't find things in your organization, they can't use it. Security, which is the context we're talking about now, uh, is a huge problem now. Now more than ever, as the world is becoming more and more uh, in tune to the risks of having our information out there. That's PII risks, there's HIPAA risks, there's the new GDPR um, regulations that are, um, that are driving a lot of concern now with how we handle personal information. So being able to find that information and understand what it is is going to help us reduce that risk. Also, poor metadata, without, poor, without proper metadata or having poor metadata means you can't do records management, which is also a requirement now. Um, and information governments and lifecycle, which are really just a dream for many organizations, are made possible by being able to, um, to, uh, to manage and find and organize that information. So the question comes in the security context, how much risk is acceptable for you? And with that, I'd like to pass control over to Ilya to talk about um, the security challenges that we have uh, specifically in this space. All right. Um, so, uh, Kevin, questions like that, uh, how much uh, risk is acceptable? Uh, the, there are a lot of surveys out there, and I just wanted to share these uh, stats from uh, one of the surveys uh, that was recently published by Ernst & Young uh, Global Information uh, Security Division uh, that they uh, did the survey of uh, uh, multiple decision makers in the IT and IT security organizations. And I don't want to, to read all of these uh, numbers to you from the slide. You can, you can look at them and think about them later. But a uh, couple important figures here. So on the, uh, on the bottom right uh, is the most scary figure uh, on this slide. Uh, pretty much almost everyone believes that uh, their organization's cybersecurity function does not fully meet their organization's need. This means they are not feeling safe. They they don't believe they have covered all the risks. And, and this is a fairly important figure. So we know that even though the security budgets are growing, even though the, uh, the spending is growing, uh, we as the industry uh, are uh, to do much better and we can do much better. And then uh, if we go from that figure to, to the uh, top left, uh, with all the increase in the budgets, with all the, uh, with all the investments in, into security, a uh, vast majority believes that uh, they need more, uh, more cybersecurity budget. They are uh, seriously under budgeted, under soft. So what does this mean? This means that even though there is a lot of data and it is growing, uh, even though the systems are very complex and uh, the complexity keeps growing, uh, organizations don't necessarily have resources, don't necessarily have uh, enough, uh, enough stuff, enough knowledge, enough expertise, enough tools to be able to quickly identify the risks, quickly mitigate them. Um, and anything that we, we as the vendors uh, can do to help you uh, automate your processes and to, to increase your efficiency is, is definitely going to, to help with, uh, with those concerns. Uh, if we take it down from you know, overall IT security just to the data related questions um, and, and start thinking about what you as, uh, as the IT professional, as the risk manager or someone who is responsible for the data security uh, should be thinking about, uh, we are looking at questions like, uh, you know, how, how much data do you have there? What kind of data is there? Um, out of all those terabytes and petabytes of information that you've got in your different repositories on file shares and SharePoint in the cloud, uh, do you know which data might be subject to, uh, to, to any compliance regulations? Uh, do you know which data is most important, most critical for your business? Uh, do you know what your business owners or, or the board cares about most? Um, are you sure that uh, you know you, 
data that is critical is not sprawling out of your designated locations for that. Um, do you know who has access to that? So all of that are all of these are really important questions that we hope that uh, together with um, uh, technologies coming from Netflix and concept searching, we can really help you with. And let me talk a little bit about what are those uh, use cases that we cover to kind of help you find that needle in those stacks uh, of data, of information, and how we can help you secure those most precious parts of your uh, infrastructure and data that you own. Uh, so, uh, going through those questions are on a very high level, um, the very first thing you want to know is where is your sensitive data located, uh, whether it is sensitive because of the uh, business value or because it is uh, potentially regulated and you need to comply with uh, with any kind of legislation there. Um, and it's um, it's very important to, to get a, a high level view of uh, what is your sensitive data, right? What, what do you have? Uh, what kinds of data do you have? Uh, and where it is located, so that you can assess your kind, uh, uh, your current risk uh, uh, risks that you have on hand. And this is where uh, concept session technology uh, is is really great. Like Robert just uh, described, how it can uh, go in and help you identify what exactly do you have there, what kind of concepts, and how they all roll up into various data types and taxonomies. And we will talk about that a little bit later. But uh, once you uh, understand what you have on hand, uh, you, uh, you are now able to prioritize your efforts because if you find anything unexpected, if you find any kind of, let's say, financial documents on a public file share, you know this is a risk. So you can um, uh, prioritize efforts. You don't have to spend the same amount of uh, time, money, efforts on protecting all of those terabytes and petabytes of data that you have, but now you can prioritize and spend on what is most critical for the organization first. And then finally, uh, like we uh, like we said, uh, you can focus on securing data that sprawled out of the designated locations, uh, which is which is really a very common case. Uh, unfortunately, a very common scenario. Uh, users tend to uh, to copy and save uh, files uh, wherever they can uh, if if they believe this is a good idea. Uh, not uh, always the most secure way to do that. Uh, but once you once you have the information about where the data is, once you you kind of have those locations, you also need to to assess the level of risks, and that's where uh, the combined data from from both Netflix and concept session technologies is really uh, doing great job to help you find overexposed data. So do you have any file shares that are open to everyone in the organization? Do you have uh, files or folders with sensitive information or regulated data that are potentially open to people who don't need to uh, to have access to that and, and so you are in violation of internal policies or uh, external regulations. Um, identifying owners is, is the key here. It's really important based on not just the, uh, the permissions or settings in the systems but also based on the uh, actual usage of this data, and that's where Netflix auditor capabilities really help, um, because you cannot just you know delete those sensitive files or or close access to them to everyone. Uh, those files are there for a reason. Someone copied them there. Someone created that folder, and that's probably now a part of so, some sort of business process. So you need to work with the uh, data owners to be able to to work on the plan how you can mitigate those risks, and uh, we can definitely help you with that. And then once you have established the process, uh, designated secure locations, uh, one of the very common security controls around data access is access attestation where you prepare a report of all the users that have access to the particular folder and then provide that to the data owner to sign off um, on a regular basis uh, whether it is quarterly or annual or whatever uh, depending on the data sensitivity so uh, that's where networks can absolutely help you automate that process automate that report generation make it easy uh, for the uh, business users to work with 
Another important thing after you have established your processes, after you have uh, understood what what you've got on hands, is to make sure that you are continuously tracking the user activity around the uh, those locations that uh, contain secure uh, or sensitive data. And that's again uh, the main uh, the main use case of Netflix Auditor. We really help you to establish that ongoing process uh, with the reports and alerts around who has. Uh, done what in the system across uh, all the systems actually. Um, all of that helps you not with uh, not only with the ongoing practices, not only with the ongoing security and risk mitigation, but also with the compliance needs. Um, and quite important. Um, and Robert mentioned GDPR a couple times uh, in his introduction, but most of the regulations, uh, GDPR included, require you to notify the authorities, notify the impacted uh, customers or partners about data breaches. So being able to determine the severity, the scope of the data breach is really important. And again, that's where we can help you by giving you full information what kind of data was accessed by a potentially compromised account. Uh, the two technologies, concept session and networks, are really flexible. So we we don't just focus on any particular regulation. We allow you to accommodate any new data security regulation, whether you are entering a new uh, business or I don't know, uh, filing for for an IPO, uh, and so now you have to comply with uh, with SOX or entering new jurisdictions, or if there are new laws that are being enforced, uh, we can definitely help you to accommodate those uh, into your processes. And then finally, last but not the least, with the reports, with the automation that we give you, uh, we allow you to not only uh, build those security controls, but also have a proof of those security controls for the auditors, whether internal uh, or external regulators and auditors. So really quick, last thing I wanted to show before we go into the demo mode is the list of the out-of-the-box uh, classification rules and taxonomies that we have. I'm not going to read through all of that, but you can see some of the um, uh, most common regu uh, regulations on the screen, but then also uh, generic uh, sorts of uh, taxonomies for personal information, health information, generic finance records. So uh, all of that is very flexible. You can tune it, you can tweak it to adapt to your needs, to your organization. And uh, uh, Jeff and Robert will show you how to, to act with that just in a minute. And with that, I will pass it over to Jeff Melnick for the first demo that we have today. Great, I'll give Jeff control. I'll actually make you presenter, Jeff. And I'd just like to add to that list that um, this is a living list that uh, Netrix is con consistently and constantly updating, but can also be, as we can see, as we'll see in the demos, uh, be modified by you as the security administrator. So, Jeff? Cool, hey, thanks a lot, Robert. So let me dive in. I'm gonna give you guys a kind of a short uh, demonstration of what we can do and kind of how that dovetails into uh, our, our partnership with Concept Search. So one of the things, again, as Ilya mentioned, uh, that kind of drives our organization is security, compliance, the ability to see what's going on, uh, things like changes. Uh, we have a lot of out-of-the-box reports, but we also have some really neat uh, mechanisms, alerts, subscriptions, et cetera, to gather the data. Uh, and one of those is this pretty cool, uh, mechanism, which is what we call the interactive search. Gives you a very easy way to go through and perform kind of ad hoc queries of uh, change data that's taking place out there. So if I'm looking for everything that a specific user has done in the last few months, for example, and let's say I want to do kind of an ad hoc, you know, string text query, I'll throw in permissions. Uh, it'll go through and it'll look for everything that this person has done in the last couple of months uh, that has permissions anywhere in the record. And you can see there's all different types of data in here as far as who's made this change, what was changed, et cetera. Uh, so here, for example, you can see some group policy, file server data, et cetera. So let's say, for example, I'm looking for what this user has done over the last few months. He's leaving, I never really liked the guy anyway. I'm kind of curious what he's been up to. Um, let's say he's a file server admin. I've already looked at all the file server data that and all the changes that he's supposed to have made and those all look you know, relatively reputable. So in this case, I can also use not only the above uh, the piece at the top, the who, what, where, when, but I can also use the records themselves to include or exclude data. 
So let's say I want to go through, and I want to see anything outside of the scope of file server. And in this case, it's going to come back and it's going to give me a much tighter uh, grouping of data. So here I've got some group policy changes, uh, some site changes made in SharePoint. I'm not the fan of SharePoint that everyone else is here, but um, uh, here you can see there's an Active Directory uh, security delegation change, uh, a couple of shares that were created and deleted on, on servers, et cetera. So it gives you the capability to see all the changes that are taking place across all the platforms that we're auditing for you. Uh, it's a pretty powerful tool. Uh, you can also go through, obviously, it's a relatively easy up here, and again, I can I can go through and continually refine my search through the records through this interface. Uh, there's also an advanced mode, so I can drop in and put in some other information. So let's say, for example, uh, I want to look at something like uh, object type equals group. And I click search real quick, and it's going to go through and it's going to pull up everything. I might say, hey, you know, I've got some SharePoint Online stuff in here, some Exchange Online. What I really want to see is just... Uh, in this particular case, Active Directory. So I want to see all Active Directory uh, group changes. And then I can go through and continue to refine this. So let's say I want to see, uh, I want to include uh, enterprise admins, and I'll try to keep this brief because I know I have a limited amount of time, but let's say uh, domain admins and server operators. So now I can very easily see all of these changes that have taken place. So did I include that? Oh, I did the same one. Let's see. Should probably have some more coffee before I do these. And there we go, server operators. Click search, and now it's going to give me all of these changes that have taken place against these specific groups. So I can go through here. I can save this as a custom report. Uh, I can create alerts through here. Uh, the neat thing about this is it allows me to go through, and it's already got these pre-built filters. So if I decide, hey, you know what? This is something I might want to take a closer look at in the future. Uh, I can use this to build these alerts directly through this interface. There's thresholds, there's a risk score, there's a bunch of other ways to make these alerts usable um, around these different types of changes. So thresholds, probably not useful around AD changes, but again, things like file server changes, uh, large numbers of those, fail logons, those types of things. Now, we certainly have the ability to do these ad hoc reports. We can also go through, and there's a huge number of out-of-the-box reports. So around things like Active Directory, file servers, et cetera. Um, there's also quite a bit of compliance documentation out there as well. Uh, CGIS, uh, GLBA, ISO, GDPR. Obviously, everyone loves GDPR. Uh, and these give you kind of a quick overview of some of the requirements within GDPR. Uh, and it's basically a, a mapping document. So if I'm looking for something like access control information on Article 5, it'll give me a full listing of uh, some of the reports that you can go into and run. So if this particular compliance is new to you, obviously GDPR is new to everybody, uh, or if you're uh, more familiar with what you're looking for, it's very easy to get up, uh, start subscribing to these reports and having them start being delivered to you on a regular basis. So really giving you uh, a lot of out of the box functionality. Um, our, one of our big things is to give you data relatively easily uh, and in a human readable format. So if I look at something like, hey, let's take a look at Active Directory changes uh, you can see here, I've got a number of those, and one, they're color-coded, so I've got modifications, removals, additions. Um, this top one here is an enterprise admins group change, and you can see very clearly who has made this change, when, from uh, what workstation and the source domain controller, also all the details. So in this case, I added two users, removed a couple of machines, added a group, uh, and here's some before and after values. So we're going to give you a lot of detail around these records, also with a lot of sorts, a lot of filters, uh, so I'm looking for changes made by a specific user to a specific object. Uh, I can do all of that very easily. Uh, and this is what we've been doing for, for a lot of years in this case. Um, so, for example, uh, we can see not only changes, but we can also see, and you can see there's a large number of reports in here just around AD changes, but we also see what we call state and time data. And that's going to be things like, hey, not only do I want to see changes made to administrative groups for a security and compliance perspective, but I also want to see who's currently a member of those groups as well. And these are reports that I can generate very easily on things like account operators, domain admins, et cetera. Uh, I can even see who was in these groups, you know, a couple of months ago, for example, if I want to do a comparison. So we give you a lot of capability and a lot of functionality as far as what's going on uh, and changes that are taking place across. You can see a number of different platforms here, AD, SharePoint, SharePoint Online, Windows servers. Um, there's even a video recording mechanism to give you additional context. Uh, and then one of the things that really uh, kind of binds us together is this file server uh, application. 
So we can see things like files over changes, uh, access attempts, permission changes. Again, a lot of people need to review those on a regular basis, and I can see these very, very easily. Um, I can also see, again, not only changes, but current information as well. So for example, I can see uh, folder and file permission details. So I can see who currently has access to a, a folder or structure. So if I want to see something like, hey, I want to see in my engineering group, or my engineering directory rather, sorry, uh, let me say no for now, uh, I can run a report very easily and see everyone who actually has control of this information. So in this case, it's going to give you the explicit access, right? So here I've got you know, built-in admins, this guy randomly has access, of these two groups, uh, and then we're going to give you, uh, we're actually going to hide inherited permissions. So we're only going to give you subfolders that are different, they have different permissions. So if you have a thousand subfolders and only three of them are different, we can give you all 1,000 of those, but you probably only want the root folder uh, and those three that are different. And this is going to give you explicit permissions, but if someone says, hey, you know what, I'd really like to know who actually has access to that, I, I can do this as well. I can open this up, I can blow up these groups, and I can get a full listing of everyone who actually has access to this. So again, I talked uh, briefly about subscriptions. It's very easy for me to uh, automate these reports to go out uh, to whomever on some schedule daily, weekly, monthly, Mondays and Thursdays, quarterly. Uh, so for example, I could send a listing to my HR director or other uh, department heads quarterly and say, hey, these are the people who have access to your stuff. Is this correct? Uh, one of the things I always struggled with uh, as an administrator was, you know, people are always asking you for additional access. And if somebody leaves the organization, it's pretty easy to go through and, and make sure they, they get removed. But when they move laterally in the organization, they say, hey, you know what? I worked in this group. I'm working in this new group now. I need access to both. I've never gotten a call from one of those users to say, hey, by the way, I need to come out of there. So it allows you to go through and automate this process where they can go out and take a look at data. Uh, and I can see a bunch of other information as well. I can see the same type of information by account, you know, what users and groups have access to. Uh, I can see things like excessive access permissions. But one of the, uh, which actually I'll show you very briefly. So since I'm in here, so let's say I want to go in here and see uh, HR data, and I want to see anyone who hasn't touched this data in the last year. So this will give me a full listing of everyone who hasn't accessed this data. So in this case, you've got almost 20 people that have full control of my HR data directory. And I'll actually put this in here so you can see sort of the, uh, the contrast. Uh, in this case, I've got about 20 people who have full control to a directory structure, and only three that have ever gone in here and done anything. And again, I can drill down into these. I can take a closer look at them if I choose to see what files they've been accessing. But clearly, you know, especially with the you know, rise of, of malware or ransomware, um, if these people have full control, clearly they don't need that, and I can dial that back. Now, one of the issues we've uh, had was the follow-up questions of, hey, that's awesome. You can see all this file structure data, right? Um, what's going on inside of the files? And that's something we've never really been able to look at. Um, Anybody can kind of crack open a file and take a look at it inside it. It can be, you know, obviously relatively intense computationally to, to, to go in for large amounts of data, but really it's determining what is that data uh, and intelligently being able to figure out what that is. And so now, right through the same interface, we can go through and find out where that data is actually located. So for example, if I go into the top level folders here, you can see, hey, in my accounting directory, I've got some financial records, GLBA, PCI, et cetera some other stuff in HR data. But down here in my public directory, uh, I've got a bunch of other data that doesn't really belong in here. Uh, so if I want to go in here to PII, for example, I might pop in here and gives me a listing of files. If I take a look at those files, let's say this one here in particular, it's got all kinds of stuff in here, clearly. Uh, I can drill in, and when I look at the file itself, clearly this is probably not something that we sh should be sitting out uh, in the public folder for consumption. So this allows you to go through determine where this data is located, who has access to the data, um, et cetera. And again, this is really made possible by uh, the back end, which is, uh, in this case, concept search. And they really helped drive this forward and given us this capability uh, to pop in uh, and, and crack open these files. So with that having been said, I'm going to drop this back over to Robert. And I'm going to let him talk uh, more about the, the concept uh, search technology that really uh, allows us to perform this integration. Thank you, Jeff.
Very nice. So we can see there's a lot of powerful reporting uh, functionality in the Netrix Auditor. Um, and as Jeff was mentioning, <clears throat> some of that content, what we would probably consider in most of our organizations, dark data, is really left unclassified, uh, un unchecked, unmonitored. And uh, concept searching is providing the back end so that the Netrix can, as you saw, expose some of that information that, that is kind of dark data. And really, the, the driver for this is our need now more than ever to be able to mitigate risk before it happens, you know, to go out and, and see what we have in that dark data, uh, find out what it is and get rid of it before it becomes a security risk to us. And, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of trite, but we say an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, that, that going out and, and looking at this content before we have to do something with it, before we get sued, before we have some compliance violations um, is, is worth a lot more than, um, and actually those those risks and fines and, and problems that we might have in the end. So there's just a ton of different areas where having classification is going to help you. I won't go through the entire list, but um, I'm sure you're all familiar with many of these. And as we all know, um, a growing amount of information in this, that is being stored is unstructured. It's growing more and more. We're getting more information every day and more and more of it is being unstructured. Also, as an aside, that unstructured data is more and more becoming the driver for decision, business decisions that are going on. Structured data is really taking a backseat to unstructured data, but that exposes a big uh, risk surface and, and we can help you to get to that surface, figure out what that content is about, and then mitigate it. And really, um, we we need to do this first. We need to go out and find our content, uh, find out what it's about, find out where those risks are, and then do something before we start worrying about all of the late cycle issues that we might have, like archiving, either deleting, or, or using that data, or, um, or just storing it or backing it up or things like that. We really need to go out and find out what that information is about and, and do something about it. So um, this is a difficult problem uh, because most times we get all this data and we don't have any control of it. Our users are uploading it. We don't know what it's about. Uh, and we, we, like Jeff said, we can open each one of those documents and look at it, but this is, uh, mind-numbingly uh, laborious and takes far too long. So what is a solution? Well, the solution is automation. And we've really come together with Netrix to provide this automation in the back end. I'll just jump quickly to uh, my demo site. You can see here uh, the user interface for the technology that we're implementing for, for Netrix. We've branded it Netrix here, but it's really our concept searching platform. It is, as I mentioned, a search-based technology. So we add um, sources to the system very easily. And it's built, because it's an out-of-the-box solution for end users and administrators, it installs on a server, and you can go in and add, say, a file or a folder structure, maybe a shared folder you have. Samba, Windows file shares are supported, so you can go out and um, and gather all of that information that you might have on your file shares. There are other sources available. So if you just because you have open text or SQL, don't let that stop you from looking at the product. Um, very soon, Netrix will be introducing uh, SharePoint and Office 365 support in their product. We already support those. You just need to ask us. But a number of other systems are also supported. Once you've got that, um, that those systems here, I just have a file share on my local server. It's just my own personal junk, but um, you can just map that and our crawler will go out and collect all of that information and, um, and process it and open those documents, look in that content and find out what kind of sensitive information is in there. Uh, it's very easy to use. And because it's a search technology, it doesn't need to classify all of the content all the time. It will do a first initial crawl and then later go out and do incremental crawls on that content, really slow, uh, uh, how you say, speeding up the process and uh, reducing the amount of time to get that extra information. And it's, uh, it's very lightweight on your network as well.
Once you've got all that information uh, classified, you can get a status of, of where that information is, what kinds of things you've, um, you've classified here. I can see there's a, a license in there. What is that? Uh, and, and get an overview of all your content. But really, the power comes in our taxonomies. And as uh, Ilya mentioned, there are a number out-of-the-box taxonomies that are being con consistently updated. Uh, so we can see there's there's a number here that you can you can get and see. I don't have any HIPAA content in my <laughs> in my personal folders, luckily, but I might have some PII or something like that. And you can see that uh, you can. There's a lot of out of the box taxonomies that are available for you to um, to look at. The the system will allow you to create your own um, rules here. Let me look for maybe a GDPR one. Um, let's just take generic GDPR. And you can see that the terms here, they're not locked in any way. If you don't like the way that they're working, you can modify them, you can add your own. There are a number of different ways we can add clues. So we can add a regex expression to find items. We can add phonetic data, or we can look in the metadata of the, the files. Um, you can also look at uh, look for languages. We support 72 different languages. And um, we can do uh, phrase matching and static clues. We also, the clues that we use are not really rules. They're, they're uh, kind of a set of fuzzy matching clues that will let you build a specific rule to match the content you want. So uh, we look at our compound terms, so those those multiple term phrases that we have that, that have a specific meaning. And we also allow you to, to give a certain value to each one of those. So just because marital status appears in the document doesn't necessarily mean that that document is a GDPR, uh, generic GDPR compliant document. So we might say it needs we need to have both the full name, a person, their date of birth, and marital status in order to be able to, to match that. And we can go through and, and browse the working sets add documents to a negative working set or a positive working set and, um, and get a much faster and iterative approach to improve the classifications that we have. You can also see related docu uh, documents and, um, and work with your content in a much faster way. Uh, I have uh, this, doc this driver's license that I've uploaded and it's an image. And I can actually use some of my PI, our sensitive information data to go through here and, and uh, look into that content and find the, the, the term or the, the driver's license number and classify that. The product does support a uh, limited OCR. So if you have images, we can open those images, look at the the text in those images, find the regular expression, and find things like driver's licenses and um, and classify them. The broader product has other functionality like auto remediation and things like that. So um, it's not in the, the this base product, but it is available. So don't let that stop you from looking at the the products and and giving them a, a test run. So I'll jump back to my presentation because we are running a bit short on time. Great. So how can we help you? That's really that's really a, a, the big question after we've seen the products and we've talked about the security risks. And the first step is to, to reach out to us really for a requirements discussion. Uh, every company has different needs and um, your needs may be different, your content may be different. There's going to be some similarities to how you have your content stored, but maybe you're using SharePoint and, and file shares, or maybe you're using some other systems. Let's let's have a talk and see what it is we can do to help you. We might be a fit, we might not be a fit. Um, after that, we can do a demonstration of the products and eventually a proof of concept to see um, if, uh, if it's gonna match your organization. So please do uh, reach out to us. As I mentioned, these, uh, these slides and this webinar will be on our site, so you can watch it again or share it, or come to our website and uh, and request a demo, and we'd be happy to show you the product. So we do have some time left for uh, questions. So let's uh, let's have a look at them. Uh, I do have 
a user question there. Are users able to, oh, I missed that one here. Users able to define or modify the fuzzy search terms? Yeah, absolutely. And that's really the point uh, with the way that we we built the product is that um, most tools that are similar to this, you know, and nothing is uniquely specific to ours, but most uh, tools that are similar to this have built in unmodifiable rules that will just go out. Some people are taunting AI um, as, a, as a big thing, but those products we find or our customers have found actually um, have a massive amount of false positives. So the way that we build the product is that you can uh, scan your own content, get an idea, a picture of your own content, and then use this iterative process to go through and find out what you've classified, make some modifications, and then do a reclassification to get a better classification, remove those false positives, and get a much better set of classification. To the point that our, most of our customers will find that they get to 90, 95% um, accuracy in their classification very quickly. Compare that to the reported 55% that, that, that similar technology will get, just because there's no um, configurability and there's no process in the product to go and make it better and, and do, do a better job. Let's go for another question. Um, how does a collector aspect work with cloud services like Google or Microsoft? That's a really good question, and that's a kind of a unique thing about having a search engine um, is that you can go out and uh, collect content pretty much everywhere. Office 365, including SharePoint Online and OneDrive and Exchange, or well, for the broader product, we also support Exchange, but um, with the Netrix integration, we, we will be supporting, or we, we do have support for Office 365 um, and OneDrive. Uh, we can go out and collect those just by pointing the, the crawler at it and, uh, and getting that. Now for Google, there may be some, some other complexities to that. Uh, we don't have an official support for that, but if that's of interest to you, let us know and maybe we can, um, we can do something to, to help you out there. Other cloud services, uh, no problem. Also, people often ask me about the cloud and I'll just add that on that um, they may want to host it in Azure or AWS. So we can do that as well, no problem. It doesn't need to be on premises. Next question, do we stand up a VM on our, okay, that was the question that I was just uh, asking. Well, the, the software, and I believe this is for Netrix as well. Jeff, maybe you can clarify that. Um, is a platform that needs to be installed on a Windows server. And, uh, but that doesn't matter where you put that. You can stand up a VM in your organization. You can use a, a VM up in Azure or AWS and stand that up and then connect it to the systems room remotely so you don't need to install it in any kind of in your other systems you don't need to install anything on your file servers you just stand it up um, on its own uh, Jeff do you want to yeah that's correct uh, we can install it just as a as, like you said simple application we've got um, virtual appliances available so you can spin it up on VMware or within Hyper-V uh, you can just install it on a server it also is available in the, uh, uh, the marketplace for Azure and AWS as well so there's a bunch of other options for you um, one th uh, another question, uh, do we need to install this on all my endpoints to get it to work? So I, I already mentioned that, but um, this question came earlier and I, I jumped over it. But I'll, I'll mention it again. The, one of the unique things about both Netrix's product and Concept Searching's product that I think is, is very important and probably why this, there's a good synergy between the companies is that we do not require any endpoint installation. So it's, it's what they would call an agentless solution. So if you have servers out there, you don't really want to pollute them with more applications. I know every time I install something on every server I have, it slows down and then that thing break, stops for some reason, some service stops and you're like what happened uh, Windows update comes and then you know or maybe it's if it's Linux who knows what's going on there but um, you know you don't want to have to install things because of our crawler based technology and Netrix's remote technology we can go in and look at that content without any installations on all of your endpoints which is really a, a, a great advantage just have one place to manage this and you can decouple that from your systems if you want and move it turn it off for a while um, scale it out scale it back it's, it's really quite um, quite uh, configurable in that place 
Uh, okay, I think that's pretty much it from the for the questions. Um, I would just like to mention at the end of this webinar that our next webinar is going to be called Getting Lost in Semantics, it's selecting the right search engine. This will happen in September 12th. We're going to take a break for the summer. Normally we have a webinar once a month, but we're exhausted. It's time for our summer break. So, uh, so yeah, we'll take a break for the summer and uh, hope to see many of you back for September 12th's webinar on, on search engines, search technology. It's something that we've been um, doing for a long time and uh, we have some, some expertise there. So please uh, join us in September. And I uh, just wanna thank everyone who spent their hour today to, to share with us. I really appreciate you coming out to our webinars and special thanks to Ilya and Jeff. Uh, it's been a pleasure working with you guys and I look forward to uh, more. I appreciate it. Thank you, Robert. Thanks, everyone.